Please be seated. I was writing my sermon yesterday, and I got it all done. And then I tried to save it, and it went bye-bye. <laughs> so in the process of asking where my sermon went, I was also asking where the week's have gone. It's been four weeks since uh, December 25th, and given the stories that we've encountered in Jesus's life these past four weeks, we've went all the way from manger to wedding guest, and today we find ourselves in the synagogue at Nazareth. I kind of think, you know, in the pages of gospel, we've, we've, we've covered 18 years, right? Because the last time we were in Luke was the second Sunday after Christmas when Mary and Joseph were looking for Jesus in the temple when he was 12. And now he's a man. But we know the story, right? So we can skip around and and still know where we're at and know where we're going. But sometimes I think we need just a, a little bit of recalibration. So let's square it in our minds, right? Fresh from the waters of baptism... There is a wilderness that awaits Jesus. There is work to be done in the hill country beyond the basin of the Jordan. There are challenges to overcome, temptations to resist, fears to face, and time to reckon with. Forty days, as the hymn says. And then, as if right on time, Jesus comes back. He returns home to Nazareth today. And what I find perplexing is he he enters this synagogue, right? And speaks not of the hunger he has just spent weeks battling with amongst those rocks. Nor of the beguiling nature of evil and its willful pride. Or even the voice, right? That sweet, soft voice, smooth as silk that says, cast yourself down. Someone will be there to catch you. Trust me. He doesn't speak of that. Instead, he takes what is given to him, a scroll, and with it, I think, the dreams of those who have lain at rest for hundreds of years. The dreams of Jerusalem rebuilt and the nation whole. The dreams of hoping and waiting for a Messiah. And in the midst of that, Jesus sits down And says, the prophecies of old are fulfilled. The time is now. It's a remarkable story. And you know, thousands of years have passed since that day. And my friends, the time is still now. As we await yet the fulfillment of another prophecy when our Lord Jesus Christ will come again and take us to himself. And thus the scrolls that are most often given to you and I are the Gospels. In them we hear not just of the saving power of Jesus, but an expansive and zealous love that knows no boundaries and will challenge everything we think we know. In these stories, we hear of a righteousness that is active and pervasive, working often where we least expect it. Why, even Jesus was puzzled by it sometimes. We just heard him saying things like, who touched my robe? Do you remember that? When the woman was healed 
And Jesus had no idea who had touched him. Or Jesus heard things like, Sir, the well is deep, and you have no bucket. Jesus encountered things that perplexed him throughout his ministry. And what I find so heartening is that in those moments, when he did not know, he chose to do something about it in standing up in the traditions that were given to him. Standing up in the tradition of Isaiah. Release. Forgiveness. Favor. He leaned into those prophecies just as sure as he fulfilled them. And he did that. He stood up in those traditions that were given to him, whether the person was from the lost house of Israel or not. The Canaanite woman, right? The Syrophoenician woman, Samaritans, the women at the well. And he did so whether he had the answers or not. Mercy, forgiveness, healing, they all found themselves sisters of grace. And though the works Christ wrought fulfilled the prophecies of old, it was the grace he gave us through his life that now lives in us. A basin stands in the midst of us to remind us that the promise and oath we made shall be fulfilled. And just as Jesus claimed the traditions given to him, we are to do the same with the traditions that have been handed on to us. Especially the covenant that we made through our baptism and the new commandment that Jesus gives to us in that we are to love each other as he loves us. And while as lovely as that may be, nothing really prepares us for that kind of love. For such love has no answer save one. And that is wonder. For the prophet also reminds us that our spiritual journey is not measured by how many answers we have accumulated, but by how many questions we have confronted. We are not gods or gatekeepers, but seekers who look for truth where it is most difficult to find. Our wisdom comes not from what we know, but in what we wonder. And is there anything more wonderful and terrible as grace? You heard that right. Make no mistake. Grace will exact its price and we will need God to help us with the debt. With every cross we encounter, I want you to remember, if at all possible, that you have been given the power to shape the world not only through the light that you bear, but by the dark gifts that your scars record. There is a balance. And while grace may be freely given, love has its price. Here in this moment, in, in Luke's place, right? You all have deemed that such love has the characteristics of living life with arms wide open. And what you mean by that, I've come to learn after spending a year with you, 
is that come what may, you will choose grace and do so because you are guided by the gospel. And through your baptism, you have come to know that such grace has been offered freely to the world, yes, but also in a wonderfully mysterious way that you have been given power to wield it. And the more powerful such grace is, the more expansive the vulnerability that generates it will remain. And all I can say to you is that as you approach that threshold, you'll never need Jesus more. That kind of generous and generative power that exists between you two in that moment is filled with promise, I assure you. And it does not just only shape your life but it shapes the world. It does this by fulfilling yet another prophecy that we have come to know, that what we bind here on earth will be bound in heaven, and that what we let loose here shall be set loose in heaven. To you, my friends, have been given the keys of the kingdom. Never forget that especially when the situation before you seems devoid of all love. Jesus is still there. And you are to set the world free, beloved. You are to set it free through your love. You are to let the gospel be fulfilled through you and let what you encounter today and all the days of your life be fulfilled in your hearing.